You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So we've got a bombshell issue from today's trial against Trump in New York. But first, just a reminder for those watching, uh, Glenn and I will be doing daily comprehensive coverage of the entirety of Trump's first criminal prosecution right now. So if you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe. Okay, Glenn, talk about what prosecutors just revealed in court. Brian, in case the uh, Trump trial wasn't weird enough up in New York, it looks like Donald Trump entered into a do not snitch contract with his former chief financial officer and current criminal associate, Alan Weisselberg. And no, you can't make this stuff up. So today the prosecutors offered into evidence or they indicated to the judge they want to introduce into evidence a contract, a severance contract that Trump and the Trump organization entered into with Alan Weisselberg. And get this, Alan Weisselberg gets a three quarter of a million dollar bonus if he doesn't tell on Donald Trump. No, I'm not making it up. Here is what the details of the contract involve. The, the severance package says, if Alan Weisselberg agrees not to cooperate with law enforcement authorities, against Donald Trump or against the Trump organization, he gets three payments of a quarter of a million dollars each. Now, in fairness, there is an exception. The exception says, well, if he is subpoenaed, then he must comply with a lawful subpoena, but he may not cooperate voluntarily and criticize or denigrate or essentially say anything bad about Donald Trump or the Trump Organization. So I have characterized this as a do not snitch contract and both parties, the prosecution and Donald Trump's defense attorneys are arguing over whether this contract, kind of another hush money contract in, in substance, should be introduced into evidence before this jury that is currently trying Donald Trump for paying hush money, criminally falsifying business records to cover up the true nature of those hush money payments, all to gain unfair advantage in the 2016 presidential election. I mean, you know, this case has more twists and turns than a, a great adventure roller coaster. Glenn, uh, so as not to bury the lead here, is it a crime to tamper with a witness by inducing them not to testify with money? It is a crime to tamper with a witness. That is, I've tried witness tampering cases. It's also a crime to, you know, urge somebody to aid and abet a crime. But, you know, they're trying to basically urge Alan Weisselberg not to aid and abet a law enforcement investigation or prosecution of Donald Trump. And, you know, let's get down into kind of the, the criminal law weeds here. Um, I, I actually don't think, as I look through what's been reported about this agreement, I don't think it is strictly speaking criminal. Here's why I say that. Because basically it says, listen, we will pay you um, a bonus or we will pay you additional money as part of a severance package if you don't voluntarily cooperate with law enforcement. Now, if you have a legal obligation to testify, for example, if you're placed before a grand jury or if you are subpoenaed to testify at trial, well, you, you can testify. We're not urging you to lie. We're not urging you to disobey a lawful compulsion to provide information or testimony. We are simply entering into a contract with you, an agreement whereby you get three quarters of a million dollars if you don't voluntarily cooperate with law enforcement. So here's the thing, Brian. I tried to get voluntary cooperation from witnesses all the time. We would invite them to the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office for voluntary interviews. <laughs> Law enforcement would go to their homes, knock on the door and say, listen, we'd like to interview you down at the police station or at the FBI field office. We would like you to come to the U.S. Attorney's Office and talk to the prosecutor. What people should know, because it's frankly within their rights, is they don't have to voluntarily cooperate with police, with prosecutors, with the FBI. But if there's a legal requirement or compulsion, like a grand jury subpoena or a trial court subpoena or some kind of a court order, then you do have to comply. And you can't enter into a written agreement where you will compensate somebody if they violate one of those legal duties. So, you know, it's an ugly 
um, arrangement. It is a despicable and unseemly um, contract to enter into with somebody. But strictly speaking, I'm not sure that the contract in and of itself constitutes a crime. But it sure does explain why a guy like Alan Weisselberg would not make a trial appearance and testify against Donald Trump, criticize him, provide incriminating evidence against him. And that's why the prosecutors told Judge Mershon they want to introduce it into evidence, because they want to explain Alan Weisselberg's absence from the trial. Now, they don't want to call Alan Weisselberg. They've made that clear, in part because Alan Weisselberg is both a criminal associate of Donald Trump's and is a great big liar because he's serving a sentence at Rikers Island for perjury, for having <laughs> right. lied at Donald Trump's fraud trial to try to help Donald Trump. So the prosecutors don't want to put him on the stand. The defense attorneys are actually arguing they don't want him to testify, but they also don't want the jury to see this really ugly contract that Trump and the organization entered into with Alan Weisselberg. So lots of interesting arguments on both sides, and we can talk about how Judge Mershon <laughs> has proposed sort of untying this knot and proceeding. Okay, real quick, because I think it would it would introduce some poetic irony if Donald Trump has to pay out this $750,000 and the trial doesn't change at all by virtue of Weisselberg not testifying. So did we lose anything by virtue of Weisselberg not offering voluntary testimony? We actually didn't. I don't think there's a jury, a juror in the... We actually didn't. I don't think there's a juror in the box in that New York trial who is thinking to themselves, hmm, Alan Weisselberg is one of Donald Trump's criminal associates in this hush money scheme and in the falsifying business records. So we don't really expect to see him as a witness because he was part of the crime. And I don't know whether they know he's serving time presently or not. That hasn't been introduced into evidence, but they might know about it from other sources. They're just not permitted to use it as part of their deliberations in the case. But I don't expect that the jurors are like dying to see or expecting to see Alan Weisselberg take the stand. Um, so I don't really fully agree with the prosecutor's rationale for trying to introduce this contract to the jury, because I don't think the jury expects Weisselberg to testify. Um, but here's what Judge Mershon has said. He said, well, first of all, have the parties asked Alan Weisselberg if he'll come in and testify or if he'll testify under subpoena, which would be that legal compulsion? And both parties said to the judge, uh, no, not really, which tells you everything you need to know about the fact that they don't really want Alan Weisselberg to testify. Um, so the judge said, OK, well, here is what I, I am going to ask you to do. Approach Alan Weisselberg through his lawyer, ask if he, he's willing to come in and testify, because if he is, then you really can't introduce this contract that says he's not allowed to cooperate if, in fact, you could secure his testimony and put him on the stand. So it looks like the parties are going to take a step back. They're going to regroup. They're going to perhaps rethink the positions that they're staking out. But it may very well be that we see Alan Weisselberg bust over from Rikers Island <laughs> and put on the stand in a, in a hearing out of the presence of the jury. That happens not infrequently, Brian, when there's a legal issue that can only be resolved by having a witness on the stand and addressing whatever the legal issue is. And that is precisely what Judge Mershon just proposed. We can put him on the stand, out of the hearing, uh, out of the presence of the jury, and we will ask him, are you willing to testify? Now, I would probably bet my full buck, that's my maximum bet, I'm not a high roller, I would probably put the full buck on Alan Weisselberg if he's put in that position, saying, I am pleading the fifth, because he undoubtedly has a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, because the evidence in this case has proved he's part of the hush money scheme and the falsifying business records, so he could potentially be on the hook for other crimes for which he hasn't yet been prosecuted, and he could incriminate himself if he were to testify. So I'm betting he would say, um, you know what? I'm going to decline to testify. I'm going to plead the fifth, invoke my Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. I'm not declining to testify because of the severance contract. 
um, but I'm otherwise not going to testify. But all of these moving pieces now are kind of in play and under consideration. And on Monday, it will all come to a head, and we'll see what happens with Alan Weisselberg. Glenn, if, if it is allowed for, um, for this contract to be shown to the jury, does the fact that Trump will dangle hush money for Alan Weisselberg not at least atmospherically also uh, lead the jury to believe that it's more likely that he would use hush money uh, for Stormy Daniels? Absolutely, and here's what will happen. Like if, this guy, this guy's like a hush money machine at this point. He is. Uh, it's a hush, hush money jubilee when it comes to Donald <laughs> Trump. So here's what will happen. If it turns out that Judge Mershon rules the jury can see this severance agreement that requires Alan Weisselberg not to cooperate voluntarily with law enforcement authorities, he will, he will introduce, he will allow it to be introduced into evidence, but it will come with what we call a limiting instruction. He will tell the jury, ladies and gentlemen, you may not use this as what we call propensity evidence. In other words, right to your point, Brian, you can't use this to say, well, he was kind of paying Alan Weisselberg hush money, so that's evidence that he probably paid Stormy Daniels hush money. That is not the purpose for which this piece of evidence is being introduced. You're, you're only allowed to use it for the very limited purpose of explaining why Alan Weisselberg has not appeared as a witness in this case. Uh, judges use limiting instructions all the time when a piece of evidence is admissible but is subject to multiple interpretations and right. perhaps subject to misuse to the detriment of the defendant. So if it comes in, it's going to come in with a limiting instruction. But Glenn, these people are human. And if they see that Donald Trump has a propensity to write uh, hush money contracts, aren't, isn't that going to at least subconsciously, at least atmospherically, lead them to believe that he has a higher propensity to do this? Yeah, so this is where the common sense and the rule of law don't necessarily meet one another. They don't fit comfortably. Here's what I mean by that. Um, in every trial, you will have evidence that gets blurted out by a witness that turns out to be inadmissible. What do we hear the judge say? Strike that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I am instructing you, you must disregard it. You must strike it from your mind, and you must not let it enter into your deliberations in this case. That is a necessary part of the practice of criminal law. It happens in virtually all criminal trials because people are human and trials are more art than science. They're unpredictable. So the reason that we have that rule in place is... If we didn't, every time somebody blurted out something that was inadmissible, it would require a mistrial and you'd have to start all over again. So think about the incentive that would build into the system to have people blurting stuff out all the time. You could never try a case to fruition, to a verdict. So yes, they're human, but you know, in my experience, Brian, when those jurors raise their right hand and swear to abide by all of the judge's instructions, they typically try their best to do it, but this is a fiction that we employ just to keep the criminal justice system up and running. Yeah, it would be ironic, I feel like, if a document that was initially intended to help Donald Trump in trial may unto itself, just the document unto itself, not even what it was trying to protect against, which is Alan Weisselberg's testimony, but just the document actually ends up being more damaging than the testimony would have been. Sweet karma, we call that, sweet karma. <laughs> Well, we'll stay on top of this. Uh, obviously, we'll have uh, some updates here on Monday. So for those watching right now, if you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on this screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.